Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. And today we're finally going to be taking out our D23 limited edition Giselle out of the box. And before we start, I'm Jamie and I like to make toy videos here on my channel. So make sure you like, subscribe and ring the notification bell if you would like to stay tuned for more toy video content. So I've already done one video covering the details of the box design and whatnot, but I'll still plot that footage here for those who are just watching this video for the first time. If you have already seen that video, you can skip over to the designated chapter marks for the good parts. The box is gorgeously pink that is reminiscent to her pink dress and it's adorned with all these patterns of flowers and florals and swirls and features metallic gold foil. I also really love the emblem that houses the name of the movie and her name. Also features a lovely description of the doll on the back which you can pause and read if you'd like. Top window has the movie's name in gold foil. Once the doors are opened, the box has a round border that is very reminiscent of the windows on her cottage. She is housed beautifully in the box with more gold foil patterns on the plastic window. There's also a sticker on the window that says Enchanted 15 Years. Their certificate is now housed on the inner side of the door which makes taking in and out so much easier. Mine is number 643 out of 1000. Once the outer box is taken off, you can enjoy the doll in full view. I really love this design of making the doll in full view as much as possible from all angles because, like we all know, this doll, most of her will be pretty much staying in the box anyways, and this way, in-box collectors still get to enjoy the doll, even without taking her out of the box. Alright, now let's enjoy her in her original box posing for one final time and let it ingrain in our memories, and then we take her out. So deciding to take this doll out of the box really has been the most stressful and hardest decisions I ever had to make on a doll. For me, it's usually quite simple. It's a yes or no thing for me. I either want to take a doll out of the box or I don't, you know, simple as that. But for her, it's just so complicated because I went through so much to try to get her. So half of me is like, you went through so much to get her, you really deserve to enjoy her to the fullest. While the other half of me is like, you went through so much to get her, you should preserve her in this pristine condition. So I just felt like Kronk in the middle with his angel and devil versions on his shoulders because I was really stressing out. I even had anxiety while I was like pacing around in my room trying to decide. <laughs> to others it may sound silly because you know it's just a doll why are you stressed out about it you either take it out or don't but we all know it's not just a doll for us right and I went through so much to get her and I paid so much well I've been lucky enough that what I paid for her is nowhere near eBay but still it was a lot of money for my standards because I don't make a lot of money so it was still a lot but at the end of the day I just decided to take her out because I'm like, I deserve to enjoy her to the fullest. And taking photographs of these dolls, recreating scenes from the movies is what I do and what I really enjoy doing. And you can't do that with the doll in the box. So she's coming out. And of course, the other reason being life is short. It really is. So if you're stressed out like me, don't be. Just do what you want in or out like it's your choice. You know, just think about it carefully to make sure it's what you really want because you can't really go back once you've done it. But once you've made a decision, just enjoy it. Okay, she's out, so before we get to the doll, let's check out the background a little bit. So I originally thought it was her cottage, but turns out it's actually the doors of the castle along with the steps. And as a photo editor, I can't help but notice all these messy edges. So I think they just probably used the one-click background removal tool and then just didn't clean it up. But otherwise, it's a nice background. And just a little tip for deboxers, so make sure you keep all the packaging materials so that if one day you ever need to put them back in the box and secure them, you have the things to do so. Alright, now here is a 360 overview of the doll. So, uh, this doll is pretty much based off of the animated version, but a lot of the minute details that we see on the dress actually comes from the live action version. So it's pretty cool and I think it's a perfect balance between the two mediums of the dresses. 
Usually when they do dolls of the animated dresses, they have to think about the extra details that they're going to put on the doll. But for this particular one, even though the details are not there in the animated version, but the live action dress is there so that they just need to replicate the details from that. So I think it's pretty nice. And here you can see that the dress is mostly wide on the sides, but not much train going on in the back. So it's actually wide on the sides, but it's not a full 360 roundness. And you can see the whiteness much better here when I put her on a flat surface. So just for fun, here is a comparison between the Mattel version from 2007 versus the limited edition. Of course, this is just for fun. They are unfair to be compared because of their price points. But I would like to point out one thing that the Mattel version got right, which is this really distinctive curve that she has on the flap of her dress that the LE version actually doesn't have. So that's pretty neat. I would have loved that curve to be on the LE too. And interestingly, the Mattel version was always a little bit on the ivory side, off-white instead of pure white, whereas the Disney Store version is actually really, really pure, blinding white. Plus, my Mattel doll is actually quite old, so maybe old age contributed to that as well. <laughs> now, let's get into the details, starting from the top and work our way down. So, Giselle features an updated unique face sculpt just for this doll because her Midnight Masquerade sculpt actually had a closed mouth, whereas this one she is sporting an open mouth smile, which is cuter and sweeter. Her makeup is really soft with some light blushing, pink lips, and her lips are actually painted in an interesting way where it kind of looks like a lip liner, but it could also be an effect that they're trying to do with uh, showing off the shimmery reflectionness of the lips where the lower lip middle part has a lighter color. She also has the same color eyeshadow, painted wing tips along with actual rooted lashes. Her brows are slightly arched to give that dreamy look. And I just love her little nose so much. And her tiny ears. So for jewelry, her tiara, necklace, and earrings are all metal and they are based off of their animated versions. And her necklace is an actual chained necklace made up of three different segments. And of course, her dangly earrings are also actually dangly with a butterfly stud and a dangly diamond. On top of her head beside her tiara, she also has a plastic flower with a gem inside. And I'm not sure if this flower is supposed to represent the overall flowers in her hair, or is supposed to represent that little flower clip that she has on the back of her head that is fastening her hair. Her tiara is also very accurate to the animated version, and it doesn't have the side prongs that goes into her hair, so it just kind of sits like right in front of her head. Now we move on to my favorite part, the hair. So for the hair, she has a side swept bang that is curled and gelled onto the side. It's actually attached with a little string to keep it in place. And I just love how color accurate the hair is to the movie. So the way the hair is styled on the back, it's actually very interesting because first up, she have this top part that is knotted and then is loose on its own. And then for the rest of her hair, it's just a uh, half up look where it's tied on the back from the sides and let it fall loose below. And I know there are criticism on the hairstyle because she is missing her updo. But judging from this, I think they still try to attempt it to create that volume on the top of the head with that little piece. But it's good to see that they somewhat kind of attempted to try it. So I think we can just try to play around with that little part and turn it into an updo. And her hair is surprisingly actually very good. You know, I thought it was gonna be all gelled up box hair that is stuffed in the back, but the curls are actually gelled, but still super soft and they have that bouncy feel, squishy. And overall, it just looks really good. The, the, all the curls are still holding their shape and yeah, it's very nice hair. Now let's move on to the dress. Her dress is so pretty and so detailed. I don't know where to start. So she also has her iconic butterfly over there on the corner of her neckline and it's a little plastic iridescent white butterfly with gems in it. And this is exactly the same butterfly mold that they used on the live action Cinderella dolls too. To be honest, I wish that butterfly was a little bit bigger and made out of fabric because that butterfly is quite special because in the movie, it's almost like very iconic statement piece, you know, with have this little antenna and all of that. So I wish for that specific butterfly, they had went with a fabric iridescent one. And there's also a smaller one on the other side. 
and along her neckline are strands of pearls and it's so amazing because I was today years old when I realized that it was actually there in the movie too. And I never noticed for the past 15 years. <laughs> And her puffy sleeves are actually quite sturdy. Uh, I try to squish them around, but they hold their shape pretty well. I think there's another layer or something underneath that I can feel. And they got embroidered patterns with iridescent metallic threads. And this is quite cool because even the dress in the movie, I think, are not embroideries, but just sparkles. They also got a little elastic to keep it in place. And it's cool that you can kind of just push them down to make them look like off shoulders, just like in the movie. So the same type of embroideries are also on her bodice along with some gems and in the middle there's a little fabric flower attached to it. It looks like a carnation or something, I don't know, I'm not good with flowers. And this is another thing I discovered today years old, it was in the movie too! <laughs> it was smaller in the movie so I never noticed but yep, it's accurate. <sighs> Moving on, then she also has her side waist little flower here made out of three layers of petals and with a gem sewn in the middle. And very next to it is another butterfly. Now we move on to her armband slash gloves kind of thing going on. She's very fashion forward, this princess. This is very cool. But the only thing I wish they had retained is the pointy bit from the movie because I'm obsessed with those pointy ended sleeves. Like it's very princessy and I dig them. And I just wish that they had executed them on here as well. Now moving down to the skirt part of the dress. I gotta say, the highlight of this doll is the dress and the details on the dress with the gems, the sparkles, the embroideries, the butterflies, like it's, it's perfection. And I just really love how the embroideries mix between colors. You have plur, pure, plur, you have pure white, you got silvery metallic threads, you got iridescent one that kind of shifts color into purple-ish a little bit. And then of course the, the pinks on the swirls and the flowers. The pinks are so pretty, they just pop against an overall white dress. And I have to say, I really like the fact that they swapped the, the butterflies and the flowers because the dress in the movie, there are flower pieces on the dress, not butterfly pieces. But I love that they swapped it to different size butterflies on the dress and then the flowers are represented through the embroideries. And even these particular gems on this dress shines and sparkles more than regular dolls. It, they don't feel like the regular kind of plasticky rhinestones, they have an iridescent shimmery feel to them. But be careful with those gems though, they sure do like to drop. I dropped three gems while trying to make this review. Don't worry, I saved them and I'm gonna glue them back on. And here is the back! So the back has retained full detail, just minus the butterflies, but the level of embroideries and the level of gems are still there. And it's just so refreshing to see after we got so many dolls that got neglected backs, you know? And it's, it's kind of sad that this level of quality only comes from these special, extra special dolls, right? Because back in the day, that was the standard quality, even for general normal releases. For the back part of the dress, the only thing I wish is that it had a little bit of a train and that comes to like a oval or triangular shaped uh, on the back because right now the back simply just stops in a straight line like even if you want to pull it out to kind of fake a train it doesn't quite work so that's the only thing I wish differently for the dress but there is one layer of ruffles that you can pull out from the back of the dress so that kind of works as a train I think now we go on to the ruffles so the ruffles are not all the way around I mean, they stop at the side, but it's mostly well covered by the big flap on top already, so they don't really need to be seen. Because the bottom layer of the ruffle do go all the way around, so it kind of continues the illusion that the whole dress is ruffled underneath the flap. The ruffles themselves are made out of this really shimmery, soft, chiffon -y kind of layer. I'm just throwing words here, I don't know fabrics either, but they are very soft and shimmery. And they are stitched layer by layer like this. Underneath the dress, she has her usual fishnet petticoats that works for other dolls, but not quite as much for this particular doll since her dress is bigger and heavier. So it's not doing a good job at poofing it out without the paper or tissue stuffed inside. And then finally, we got her boots. So I was so happy to find out that she actually has boots. 
and is movie accurate but the only downside is that it's not as detailed in terms of the sculpting compared to the other dolls it just feels a little bit playline boots because it's also out of, made out of shinier plastic so it's kind of giving rain boots at the same time but still i i'm still glad that the the shoes are accurate but i wish they would have been more detailed in terms of the sculpting now I left my favorite part to be last, so taking a look at her back and she actually features an actual lace up corset with actual string slash lace going through the holes. There's also this weird line that's running across her back, but it's not a part of the corset. I think it's mostly just to keep the shape and the place of the sleeves maybe in case they get too heavy. But man, it's so good to see that lace-up corset. And to my knowledge, I think this is the second doll to have that. Because the only other doll that I know, to my knowledge, is the Wedding Rapunzel doll, who actually has an actual lace-up corset on the back as well. But correct me in the comments below if there are any other dolls that actually had it and I just missed out. So for her articulation, she has the usual neck, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, and knees. And the cool thing is she also swivels at the waist. I know it's not a new thing, but sometimes the joint is there, but the waist actually don't move. That happened to me with my 10th anniversary Rapunzel and also Megara. Okay, now for the final verdict and my final thoughts. So this doll is absolutely breathtaking, perfection. I have nearly no fault to say about this doll. Like this doll really has become the um, quintessential Giselle doll to have in her wedding dress. And I'm just really glad Disney decided to make her for this 15th anniversary. Of course, I'm still holding out hope for the pink version one day. Fingers crossed, please, Disney. Um, but at the same time, I can understand why this doll is on everybody's wish list. And she just became really, really super popular and everybody just basically went great, great, like me. While it's near perfection, I will still like to point out some of the things that they could have done differently to make this like the Giselle doll, like 100% perfection in my view. So number one, the train. So eh, she would have been really perfect if the dress kind of flared out and trained on the back and it would just look really beautiful. Number two, the ruffles. Yes, I understand that the ruffles are not going to be seen on the back of the dress, but at the same time, to just really make this the most perfect Giselle doll ever, they could have added ruffles all the way around. And they can even just use like a, a cheaper normal fabric for the ruffles on the back, as long as it still had ruffles, it would have been amazing. And the rest are just minor things. They're not important, but I would just like to say it nonetheless. The pointy bit on the gloves, using a distinctive movie accurate shape of butterfly on her bodice, and retaining that distinctive curvy shape on the flap of her dress. That's it. Those are all the things that I wanted to say. And they are actually very minor. They don't make or break the doll. And the doll is perfectly fine without those details that I mentioned. But I just wanted to put it out there that if this doll had those points that I just talked about, it would just be the Giselle doll to have in the world. And if I will have never bought another Giselle ever again because this doll will be literal perfection. So whew, that is it. That is it for my unboxing and the detailed review of the D23 limited edition Giselle doll by the Disney store. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about the doll? Do you agree with what I said? Do you don't agree with what I said? Or do you wish to add more on top of what I said? Um, just sound off in the comments below. And before we wrap up, I just want to dedicate this video to my good friend Frankie Freak on Instagram, along with all the other collectors out there who haven't had a chance to get their Giselle dolls yet. So this video is pretty much for you guys. Um, so you guys can enjoy the details, look at all the nooks and crannies, because pretty much that's what I like to do personally. Um, if I have a doll on my wish list that I can't have yet, I would just look for those really detailed videos and reviews to enjoy all the details and pretty much daydream about the day when I'll finally get that doll. So I just wanted to share that same feeling to you guys out there. And that's why I made this video like really long and really detailed trying to show everything as much as possible. And I really wish and hope that you will get your Giselle soon if you don't have her yet. Remember, it's not forever. One day you will have her. 
All right, oh, enough sentimental stuff, Jamie. Um, uh, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. You can also check me out on Instagram at Jamie Creates for my toy photography because I can't wait to start doing edits of Giselle and post her photos. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, thumbs up, and subscribe. It'll really help out my channel. Once again, thanks so much, and I will see you all soon in my next video. Bye!